This is Apollo 2 Cinematic Guitars, and this is a premium instrument, an expansive instrument for all of your cinematic guitar tracks, for your cinematic tracks, even orchestral tracks, um, epic trailers, movies, TV shows for sound beds, things like that. But of course, they, uh, all of these sounds will work in uh, other styles of music as well. We have an ambient designer patch where we essentially we're you know playing back performances, but we also have an instruments patch if you want to play these things across the keyboard like a like a standard instrument. Now we're going to start off with the tutorial section, uh, and again, being that this is a premium instrument, I'm going to assume that you at least know the basics of like what is a low cut, high cut filter, what is an LFO. You understand the basics of an envelope, um, you know, a step sequencer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so we'll go over all of your options, all of your features here, so you can understand what you can do with Apollo 2 cinematic guitars, and then we'll head in to another demo section. So if you don't care about the tutorial section, that's fine, just head right over to the demo section and check out more possible sounds from Apollo 2 cinematic guitars. All right, so let's head into the tutorial section and check out what we can do with Apollo 2. All right, so let's jump right into Apollo 2. First, we'll go over the basics. So of course, this runs in contact, either the full version of contact, or even the free contact player. Once you buy it, install it, you'll find it here under the libraries tab. Here are our instruments. So we have the ambient designer, which you see right here. We also have an instruments NKI, which of course is a chromatically playable version of you know, a lot of our different sounds. And the AD companion instruments are the playable sounds that correspond to the things that we have here in the ambient designer. So for example, if I just hover my mouse over these keys, down here in the information section, we can see you know, what loop or sample we're playing. So this is the Light Drive Simple ARP 1. So I can head over here. Let's just play it real quick. All right. I can head over here to my AD companion instruments. Let's come down here, drill down into it. Now I can find under single notes, I can find the Light Drive Simple ARP 1. Let me go and load that one up. And now I have that playable instrument right here chromatically laid out of course over my keyboard all right so those are what the uh, ad companion instruments are all right you also have a bunch of presets or what they're called here in contact snapshots so just make sure your camera icon is showing and use your drop down and load up whatever preset that you want all right, let's head over to the interface here, the basics of the interface. So we have five different engines that we can layer whatever sort of samples that we want in each of them just by clicking on the name or using these arrows. Of course, turn on or off any engine with the power button. Let's head back here and set this back to where it was. There we go. So you'll notice that each of our engines have a different color and that corresponds 
to the colors that we see down here on our keyboard. So all the yellows are engine number one, all of our different loops in here. Of course, engine two. Got three, four, and five, so on, so on, right? And then we also have these blue keys, and these are the release samples. So they make for good ending. So for example, I'm playing this, I just release it. I don't really have much of a ending on that. So I can trigger that release sample and that ends it right away, okay? Then you'll notice over here, we have a black key and a white key. This is your major and minor switch, right? So that's major. Let's go to minor. Just a quick switch there. Of course, that applies to anything that you're playing, right? Switch it around to whatever you want. And then we have up here our transpose keys. Again, as you can see down here in the information section, it tells you how much you're transposing up or down. So I transpose everything down. Or transpose up. Then we have mutes and solos for each of our engines, as you can clearly see right there. You have your playback speed. So times one, of course, or times two, twice as fast or slow it down by half. We also have sync turned on. So whatever our BPM is in our DAW, it will sync that to your DAW. You can always turn that off if you want. You probably want sync on. Of course, you have those controls for every single engine. So that engine can be on sync. I can turn sync off on the uh, number four engine if I want. Turn it off, speed it up. And of course, layer up your sounds however you want. Over here, you'll see this default dropdown for each of our different engines. And this is how we split things out to individual outputs if you want. So everything is going out default right now, which of course is just the main one and two. But if I wanted to send maybe this uh, uh, reverse uh, pedal here, maybe I wanna send that out of its own output, maybe output three, for example. Well, now when I play it, we're not hearing anything because of course we have to set up that output in our DAWs. Now, how you do this depends on the DAW that you have. It's very easy here, of course, in Studio One, just activate that output. And then you'll see an individual, let me get this out of the way. Then you'll see an individual track right here. That only contains the output of uh, engine two here, all right? So if you wanna put uh, you know specific plugins on any of your different sounds from any engine. That's how you can split things out to your uh, individual outputs. Let's move on to the edit page. And we already have the edit page activated here. So we have the edit, the LFO, and the envelope page. In the edit page, we have things like volume, pitch, and pan. All of this is very simple to understand. We're not gonna go deep into this, right? So volume, self-explanatory, right? Then you have your pitch. Again, this is per engine. And then your pan, if I want to pan this one way over here. Then maybe pan engine three way over here. Or of course, wherever you want in between. You'll also see a low cut and a high cut again for each sound, each engine. Let's find a very low, very low sound. So I cut out the low end if I want. Same thing for the top end. We wanna to cut out all that top end. Now it's all low end. Or you can just move around the uh, setting there. All right, let's spread this back out. That's your edit page. All, your, all of your basic editing can be done there to balance things out, right, overall. Over here on the LFO page, again, we have it per engine. We'll just focus here uh, for now on engine one. 
All right, we'll pull up the amount. You can choose the shape, maybe a saw. Now right now where it's set on volume, I can change this to, you know, pitch, for example. You also have tempo sync on or off there. Change your speed, change your phase, change the fade in of that. Put it on lo-fi. Of course, that's per engine. Band pass on that. All right, so all kinds of sounds you can get with your uh, LFO there. Let me turn down the amounts on those. There we go. Then we have an envelope. I'm again assuming that you know essentially what an envelope is. Change the attack. Go slide in. You also have a hold here, so you have an ADSR with a hold. Choose the, the decay time, the sustain time, the release time. Right. Now if my release is way down here, as soon as I release that note, right, it immediately cuts off. So that's one to pay attention to there. Release the note. Continues on for a bit. We also have this pad button, and this really comes in handy once we get to the instrument in KI. But with a single click, it'll change our ADSR with our hold there into a pad setting there. Let's move on to our sequence and mix page. Now up here, you'll see your engine select. I can also just click a key on my keyboard or right in here, and it will automatically change the engine that's showing in here. And that's because over here in settings, I have MIDI select turned on. If I didn't have MIDI select turned on, then whenever I trigger something in our, in our engine one, the engine select is staying here on five. All right, so that might be helpful if you're editing certain things, but uh, if you want it to update whenever you press a key on your keyboard, make sure you have MIDI select turned on. Let's go back to our sequence and mix page. So over here in our sequence and mix page, let's focus maybe on engine three here. So as you can see, I play a note or a sample, it lights up right here. So we always know what's playing. Above that, you'll see this rev button, which is the reverse. Reverse that. So really quick reverses there. You also have pans for everything, every individual performance or loop here within your group. Of course, play multiples at the same time. You also have faders. Again, to adjust the volume of each and every loop uh, within, within each engine. Then you also have your releases over here. Up to our sequencer now. Maybe go to engine one for that. We have pitch, volume, pan, low pass, high pass, and a cry wah. Uh, select them to actually show them here in your sequencer and turn them on or off with this button. If they're not uh, highlighted in yellow, then they're not turned on, all right? So just pitch is on right now. You can see how the pitch changes as it goes along in the sequence. Of course, we can change our grid here, our sequencer. Just draw in whatever you want. 
more extreme changes like that. Same thing for your volume. Same thing for your pan, if you want it almost like an auto pan. Low pass. You can set this up however you want. You also have speed controls down here. Set that one on an eighth. I can change, you know, I can have a different setting for my pan if I wanted that uh, one thirty second there, one eighth there. That's fine. You also have a high pass. And let's turn it off. And a cry wall. Again, change your speed. Change the amount that it's blended in. Let's go faster just so we can really hear it. And then your overall steps. All right. Of course, combine these things together. It's a bit extreme, maybe make that quite not as extreme there. Change the amount here. Change the speed of this one. Again, you can get crazy or, you know, sounds that just complement your, uh, your overall sound, right? So that is your sequencer and mix page. Pretty simple to figure out if you've ever, you know, used the sequencer before. You can also click this X here to exit out to the main page. Move on to the effects page. Again, very easy to figure out. Very similar to our sequence and mix page in, in terms of the engine select. So you can automatically select a different engine or I can manually select it by clicking it. So we have, again, five different engines and we can have different effects for each engine, right? So if I want these sounds to have uh, a distortion on them, make sure I select it, then turn it on. Really pull up that drive, maybe the output there. Then over on engine two, maybe I want a stereo effect on that, really spread it out. Put a phaser on it. Same thing for three, four, and five. Set up whatever effects you want per engine. Maybe a nice reverb. Now for your reverb and your delay, these are send effects. So make sure we pull up this send here. You can change that to a hall or a room, set up your pre-delay, the size, all your basic reverb settings. Same thing for your delay. Make sure you pull up your send. Let's go up to our tapping here. Pretty cool. Maybe put a delay on that. And a reverb on that. Very cool. Maybe even a stereo on that. Really spread it way out. All right, so that is your effects section. Again, you can do that per uh, per engine. And then you also have a master effects section. So if you wanna put effects that, you know, on all of your engines, what, whatever sound is contained within each of your five engines, over here in the master effects, uh, that's going to affect everything, all right? As you saw though, as I played a different engine, it took me off that master. So this might be a time when you'd wanna turn off that MIDI select so I can stay focused here on my master. All right, so that is our effects section. Let's head over to the browser. Let me turn MIDI select back on. So over here in the browser, it's just another way for us to switch out our sounds. Again, we have our engine select up here. Maybe I can drill down into the folders here. Maybe I want uh, effects tonal and then my groups. So distortion one, load that up. As you can see, they, my uh, samples changed down here. Maybe an Ebo sound. Mm -hmm. 
So you can just mix and match this stuff through all of your five different engines, layer things up until they sound uh, just how uh, just how you want. We head over to engine two, go to an ARP, maybe delay pad there. Kind of cool, and of course, build up your uh, build up your overall sequence. You also have a randomized engine down here. You can randomize all five engines as long as each button is selected. So I click that. Everything is randomized. Now we have different samples in each of our different engines. There, do it again. Now let's say we like what's in engine one, but we don't like. We don't like anything in three, four, or five. So I can take one and two off there and then just randomize three, four, and five. Randomize again. Maybe I like that, take three off. All right, so that is your browser. Moving on to the settings. We've already seen the MIDI select. No reason to go over that again. Then we have a latch right here. So. With latch turned on, if I hit a key on my keyboard or even click it in here, it will continue to play. Let me actually go up here to um, maybe engine four, go to latch there. And whenever I have latch turned on, you'll see this new key appear right here. So we can unlatch everything or relatch everything with that key right there. So again, with latch on, I just have to hit a key once. I don't have to hold it down. And we'll continue to play. Of course, until I unlatch it. So again, you can trigger multiples. All that's playing, I'm not holding down any keys on my keyboard. Then stop all of them right there with that uh, latch or relatch all of them with that same key. And then you have the pitch wheel control. So if you don't want the pitch wheel to affect a certain engine, just turn it off. You can also set what the range of the pitch wheel is. So if I set it way high, make sure one is on there. You can bend it way up or bend it, uh, bend it way down. Or of course, constrain that. Or if I don't want engine one affected, I can turn that off. Now, nothing from engine one is affected by that pitch wheel, but engine four and engine five still will be affected uh, by that pitch wheel. Then we have our playback mode, either poly or mono. Right now it's on poly. And essentially what this means is I can play more than one note per bank or per engine, right? So on engine one, maybe I want both of those, which I can do because poly's turned on. If I had mono turned on, play one, I go to play the other it crossfades into the other one. Now, even with mono on, I can play multiple notes. So I can play something here in one and also play something in, you know, three or four, two or whatever. So just keep that in mind, right? So again, back to mono here with our crossfade. Make that crossfade faster. almost instantly goes into that uh, next loop or have a crossfade in, you know. So that is your settings page here in the ambient designer. All right, let's move on to our instruments in KI now.
All right, so here we are in the instruments NKI, and it's laid out pretty much the same as the ambient designer. You also have your snapshots or your presets up here as, uh, as well. A lot of this stuff is the same, so we can switch out our samples just by clicking right there. We have our LFO, we have our edit page, we have our envelope page, but now we also have a performance page. So under the performance page, we can change things like the control dynamics. Right now it's set on velocity. Velocity basically means how hard you're hitting the key, right? Or if you're in contact down here is a low velocity up here is a high velocity, right? So I can change that to the mod wheel. Let me make sure I change it over here on engine one since that's what we're dealing with. So change that to the mod wheel. So even when I trigger a low velocity, it's still giving me a high velocity and I can control the velocity with my uh, mod wheel, right? So low velocity, can't even hear anything. High velocity. No matter how hard I'm hitting that key, right? Right, let's switch this back to velocity. Then you have your velocity curve, which essentially is just like the way that you play or maybe the way your keyboard works. Do you want to have to press harder or lighter in order to get a you know a high velocity, essentially, is what that means. So very concave. I really have to hit hard to get that higher velocity versus very convex. I don't have to hit nearly as hard to get that high uh, velocity. All right, then we have dynamics full. We can have layer one, layer two, or just layer three uh, if we want. Just layer two, just layer one. Or the full. Very good. Then we have legato and the legato speed. Kind of a slower speed there where it's gliding up. much uh, quicker there. Just depends on what you're playing on where you're where you're going to set that. And of course, you have the control for every single engine. All right. So you can really dig in here and customize things just the way you want. So over here in the instruments in KI, of course, we can still you know, send things out to individual outputs, just as we did in the uh, in the ambient designer. We already know what the sequencer page looks like. Once again, once again, we have this per engine. All right, so just select your engine. Change the pitch there, maybe have an auto pan around. Cry wall on that one. Effects page, same thing. We don't need to cover this again. Per engine and also uh, master. Browser, again, same thing. We can dig into the folders here, load up uh, whatever we want. Again, per engine, just select the engine that you want to focus on there. Maybe go to pick, delay pad on that. Swells or reverbs. Tapping. Right. Same thing for our randomize. And then we have a new page here. This is the keyboard page. And this is where you can set up your essentially your your key splits or where one engine starts and where you know where it ends and where the other one begins. So down here on engine one, down here. We can see the lowest key is A minus one, and then the highest is B zero. Once we get past B zero, up here, engine two is C one, all the way to D two, so on and so forth. But we can change this up however we want. So if I want to constrain the high key for engine one, I can pull that down further, 
So now, when I play these keys, nothing plays at all. And I could even extend engine two down further if I want. Or just say I need the other, you know, the extra range there. But maybe I also want to extend engine one higher. Well, I can do that. We can just overlap them. And whenever we overlap a key range, those keys turn blue, all right? So your blue keys are whenever uh, one engine is overlapping with another engine. Otherwise, they are the same color as the, uh, as the engine, right? So now whenever I play any of these blue keys, both of the engines will trigger. Right, you can also set your high key and low key by just clicking the keyboard icon. So we'll click it here on engine two. I'll click my low key, and then I'll click another key up higher. And there we go, now we've set our range. And we're overlapping with engine three here. So that can be a really quick way where you set up your, uh, your key splits just by hitting that again. That's my lowest key. And I want the highest key to be all the way up to C2. Or I could even maybe go to engine three here. Maybe I want engine three. That Ebo sound. I want that really low as well. So we'll go way down here and then way up here. So now we're triggering the Ebo. Along with uh, engine one and engine two. So we have three engines running. All at the same time, of course, we can extend engine four into that. Just by setting up your key splits. Don't forget, adjust your volume for each engine. Adjust your sequencer for each engine. Adjust your effects for each engine. Again, full customization of your sounds here in cinematic guitars. Next, we have a velocity control for each engine. And well, I'll just show you what this does. So right now it's on one to uh, 127 for each of these. So say on engine one, I play a soft velocity. It plays, I play a hard velocity. Of course it plays, right? But if I don't want it to play, if I don't want engine one to play at very low velocities, I only want it to be triggered at very high velocities, then I could uh, you know, raise this up, let's say. So now if I do a low velocity, I'm just pressing a key on my keyboard or I could do it in here so you can see it. So low velocity, nothing at all. Then once I get up here, it triggers. All right, so again, you can set that up per engine. Of course, you could do it in the opposite manner as well. If you only want something to be triggered at a low velocity, something here on two, then I press hard, nothing at all, press soft. All right, so that's what that control does. Then you have a transpose control again per engine. So right now engine two is transposed up by three. Of course, we can drag this down. And that affects everything within engine two. Over to engine three. And transpose that down. Or up, of course. Same thing for four, five, and even one here. So I transpose this down. Pretty cool sound. All right. Of course, mix and match and use all of these controls to get just the sound that you want out of Apollo 2 cinematic guitars. Onto our settings page, we have our pitch wheel control. So just like last time, uh, if you don't want the pitch wheel to affect a certain engine, just uh, untick it there, right? So just... Just affect engine one, even though we have our key splits, right, all over the place here. 
that pitch wheel is only affecting engine one in that case. Then you can constrain the pitch. So you can really pitch that way up and down or constrain it to, you know, one, two, three, whatever you want. Again, if I don't want everything affected by that. Just getting one and two there, leaving three, four, and five out of the pitch wheel. All right, so that is all of our controls here in the, uh, in the instruments in KI. So that is the tutorial section for Apollo 2 cinematic guitars. You know, this library is a great sounding library, a unique library that you can use in many different genres of music, not just your orchestral or cinematic or ambience, but you can really you know, weave it through all kinds of different genres of music. All right, so what do you say we jump into the demo section now and check out a vast array, a wide variety of possible sounds that you can get with Apollo 2 cinematic guitars.
Alright, so that is Apollo 2 Cinematic Guitars Head right over here. If you want to check it out further, 36 gigs of masterfully recorded sample content, over 220 presets, more videos over here, more samples over here in different styles of music. Again, more info here, full walkthrough video here as well, right? So again, this link will be in the description below if you want to check it out further. If you want to pick it up for yourself, 
you can head to any of these different sites. I'll have links for each of them. This is a high-end library for high-end production. So yes, it does it does cost you know about 400 bucks, but again, high quality, professional. It's different than a lot of the other libraries out there. So it can really add something, add some texture, add something different to your productions. So that is Apollo 2 Cinematic Guitars.